All right, guys, today we are going to get out uh, with the Surly Ice Cream Truck 2020 Surly and try to test it on some climbing. Got a few different obstacles we're going to try to tackle today and see how this bike performs on steep climbs, on prolonged climbs. Um, some will be more punchy, some will be more drawn out at higher elevation. Uh, and I think we have a climb coming up. That'll be a good test on a low speed, slightly technical uh, with switchbacks, which will be a good test uh, for this bike uh, on that type of climb. So if you've been following my channel at all on this bike at all, have tested it in the snow multiple times. It performs great as it should. Uh, I've done a lot of gravel grinding and dirt road riding with it too, which is more for fun. Uh, it's probably definitely not the ideal bike for that type of riding but it's definitely fun and certainly comfortable and can certainly do it and we're going to be getting it into some trail riding in the future too and really test it out on that aspect uh, we'll probably add a dropper seat post before we get into any of the technical trail type riding so for this stuff here which I guess you'd call it single track but uh, it's really pretty mild and it just glides down this stuff uh, it's, uh, it's a good bike on uh, this type of riding casual fun or just to get some exercise you definitely get you definitely burn calories on this bike We're coming up on our first test of the day it's not a very long or steep climb but it is twisty so it'll be lower speed it'll be a good test of the bike's handling but uh, it's coming up right over here. But this bike is super fun on this type of mellow, single track, rolling. It's a lot of fun. When Surly redesigned the ice cream truck a couple years ago, they did make it a little more of a trail bike. And it's really bumped it up on this type of terrain. If I compare it to my 2014 Pugs, which is a very different bike anyways, in its application is a more of a touring adventure bike. But you do notice a big difference is how this bike feels at speed and on more trail-oriented conditions. It definitely uh, soaks it up and eats it up a lot better at speed. really does just glide over everything so super fun all right so here's our first uh, little test of this bike uh, this climb it we're gonna be coming up right around here somewhere uh, and it kind of switch backs up uh, not super steep, but it's it's not exactly mild either. Um, but it'll be a good test on lower speed, slightly technical, uh, with some cornering involved uh, while climbing. See how the spike handles at low speed uh, when you're under a load. It's a little bit loose, so again, that's a good test for traction off camber a little bit.
no problem at all. All right, so that climb was no challenge at all for the spike. Um, big tires, bite riding, tr lots of traction, uh, comfortable, rolled right over everything. So I think uh, test number one is a success. Lower speeds and turning, uh, bike did well. This bike has wide 780 millimeter wide bars on it. Uh, when I first got it, it was a little bit of an adjustment, but uh, after actually riding a bike with it, it's definitely uh, something I like. Don't plan to cut them down at all. The big benefit to the wide bars is at low speeds, especially with the big you know, front tire, uh, it gives you more leverage for turning. So it quickens up the steering feel of the bike and makes it uh, much more responsive than if it had shorter bars on it. So now we're gonna go ahead and jump jump over this and head over to our second obstacle get off the line a little bit there and our next obstacle is a very steep straight up climb we'll see how this bike can tackle that it's a challenge with lighter bikes we'll see uh, how this bike holds We're probably used to bikes we'll go slow See if I can ride past them. All right, they'll catch up. We're closing in on our climb. We're actually be climbing up on this ridge over here. That's where we're going to end up. And we'll probably be coming down over off that side there. Okay, this is our next climb. It is uh, really steep, especially the last third of it. And uh, we'll see how the bike does. Here's some signage right here. Okay guys, here we go. I'm not gonna get a run up on it. I'm just gonna kick right into it. Not in my steepest gear yet. So I got one more when I need it because I will. It's a lot steeper up at the top. Down here, pretty mild, not too technical. But there's definitely some loose rocks with smaller tires could be an issue. All right. Legs are already burning. Let's see if I can pull this off. Nope. That much more to go. 
just uh, started to lift the front wheel and mainly the problem was ran out of endurance I'm not in mid-season form yet that's for sure but just to give you an idea how much we have climbed that's what we came down or came up and that's the trail we came in on right there so it's a good gain in a short period of time and especially seeing it's pretty much straight up there's not much uh, opportunity for relief and this is a nice area by the way I'm gonna hop back on see if we can even restart on this hill and maybe finish it it's fairly early it's about 7 30 so it's not super hot but the sun's intense and I'm feeling it so let's see if we can even get a start on this and try to roll the rest of it a little, little tire spin but we got going leaning forward over the front who missed it tried to dodge that rock just came up short all right guys at the top of the climb 20% grade definitely steep but got up here ran out of steam about three quarters of the way up and then right near the top at a big rock I was worried about pedal striking and I just lost my momentum on it but overall the bike the bike does great all right let's take a quick break and talk about the bike for a few minutes before we do that just want to show you real quick these are the flat irons and right down below there is Boulder Colorado but back to the bike for a heavy bike you know it weighs about 35 pounds as ridden it is set up tubeless uh, it actually climbs exceptionally well there's plenty of gearing with the 1x12 uh, I'm definitely not in mid-season form so uh, I couldn't uh, the only limitation on that last climb was me um, I think later in the year I'd definitely be able to pull it off once I get trained up a little bit on it but benefits to the bike on climbing are these tires uh, they're so big uh, you get epic traction with them uh, with smaller mountain bike tires and things like that on climbs like that I would I would almost always spin out because you'd be tar generating so much torque in the high gear and as a result you know you just overwhelm the traction that you have this bike doesn't do that it's it had excellent traction I barely heard uh, any any uh, slippage from it um, the other benefit to the size of the front wheel is it does help the bike stay planted again another issue with a lot of mountain bikes on a steep climb when you're turning all that torque from a, a, a big gear in the back is it'll want to lift the front uh, so this bike doesn't really do that I think I, I had one section where it started to pull up a little bit uh, but again if I was already kind of fatigued out so if that weren't the case I probably could have uh, reeled it back in and kept it going uh, by leaning forward on it a little bit uh, the bike is a, a more trail worthy uh, geometry but it's not super slack where it's really pushing you putting you back over the back tire and uh, prone to lifting it's a, a 68 degree head tube angle which for a fat bike is pretty decent as far as the uh, trail slackness goes by modern trail bike standards it's not very slack i think we'll uh hop back on here and we're gonna go ahead and uh get back at it and head to our third climb which is going to be a much longer more gradual not as steep but still a protracted mountain mountain climb so that'll be a good test uh, of the bike too uh, for more of that style of climbing just going to give you a quick view of uh, the third uh, climb we're doing today and I know the camera kind of doesn't really give you a good sense of scale but we're going to be going up into these mountains uh, up here and probably end up through here somewhere uh, so it should be a good long prolonged climb to really test it out on uh, on this type of climbing all right at the trailhead we'll start heading up into those mountains we're nearing the top our first little segment here I think my battery's about to die it's 
we'll swap that out and we'll get into the second stage of the climb of the Gadeca. This bike really does pedal easy though. Like I said, the comfort and the traction, unparalleled. Plugging away. We actually got some steep parts coming up here, so we'll see how that goes. But we're making progress. But again, the bike it tracks true. Another benefit of the tires size, it's stable. Awesome grip. But you do got to turn them, and that's that's the hardest part. Still steep. We're getting up into the trees. A little shade wouldn't be a bad thing. Still great traction though. When it does get steep, and you're in the big ring in the back. Turning all this weight. It is slow. Let's see if we get some rock steps here. Take the hard line and see how we do. Nice. When this bike has any kind of momentum, it rolls over pretty much everything. This video is about climbing, not descending, but you usually can't do one without the other, so we'll get a little bit of this in there. This bike is begging for a dropper seat post, they can't accept one, and I do intend to put one on soon, which will be more technical trail riding. But until then, Be a good test. It's very loose. Actually, impressive.
in the home stretch now. I think it felt good getting that air. A little bit of speed. Thing barrels down the descents, that's for sure. Again, probably had a little too much air in the tires for that. Got a little springy in a couple spots. And we're back to the trailhead. We're just about back parking lot so I think uh, in summary the bike has proven to be very good on climbs great traction comfort stability the uh, wide bars help uh, as far as giving the steering quickening up the steering even though you have the big heavy front end with a uh, you know steel fork and a large fat tire it makes it uh, able to be quickly corrected and uh, the bike does great it's not a full-on modern geometry you know enduro trail bike uh, by any means but for a fat bike definitely has some good trail geometry attributes to it which make it fun comfortable versatile and uh, it's a great all-around bike. If you found this video useful, please drop a like down below. If you have any questions or comments, please drop those down below. I uh, read and answer all the comments. If you want to see more of this bike, uh, please uh, subscribe. I have plenty more coming. I have uh, several other videos on the channel already about this bike. And I'll be uh, adding more to that and more. Thanks. Have a great day.